Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Ground Floor, episode 7, uh, brought to you by Poddex, and as always, uh, take a look at the link down below, check out Poddex, and use code NERD21 to help support the channel, and to buy some really cool uh, Poddex merchandise. So, uh, with that, we're going to jump right into this. This is going to be the top 10 worst TV shows that I've seen. Uh, so far <clears throat> Mind you I know there's a lot worse But I've made it a point to avoid the lot worse. So this is the worst that I've seen uh, And Shane if you watch this and I will tag you in this uh, when it goes live um, You're gonna hate nine through seven <laughs> Just gonna say that right now nine through seven I'll be surprised if you get the number six. Um, so uh, with that said, let's just jump right on in and let's see what the worst of the worst is. At number 10, I have Supergirl. Yes, I know it got better when I went to CW for season two. No, I didn't watch it when I went to CW when I got better after season two. <laughs> because I was thoroughly not interested in CBS having it during season one. Uh, I watched the first three episodes and I was done. And I just wiped my hands of it. I deal with the characters when they're on uh, crossovers. But other than that, I, I don't bother with this show. I just was not my flavor, not my style. Same thing with Batgirl. I watched the first two episodes of Batgirl or Batwoman or whatever the hell it's called on CW. And I, I just, I can't, I, I can't do it. I wish I could because we need more female superheroes. Uh, and it's at least more, I should say more female superheroes in uh, TV and movie media. And it just, it just doesn't work for me. Unfortunately, <clears throat> so and that's really all I have to say on that one. So we will move to number nine. And Shane, this is where you're going to start hating me. Granted, I think we both agree on number nine. So number eight and seven, you're probably that's probably where you'll start hating me. But it's okay because number nine is Digimon Data Squad or Data Squad, however you want to pronounce it. Or also known as Digimon Dats, or just Dats. Uh, or as I like to call it, a filthy pile of shit. <laughs> so, um, yes, this order is in reverse from least uh, worst to the worst. So, as much as I hate <coughs> Data Squad, it is by far not the worst Digimon franchise season that I have seen. Uh, to be honest, I don't remember much out of Dats because I kind of tuned it out of my brain. I did watch it all, but I I just I can't remember much of it. I do remember the main protagonist. His answer to pretty much everything is just run up and punch it. Um, and that's a human. That's not a Digimon. That's a human. That is, oh, look, big Digimon, champion Digimon, ultimate Digimon. Oh, look, Omega Digimon. I think I'm going to punch it. Like, the fuck, dude? You're going to die. Like, without plot armor, you're you're dead. <laughs> you should be dead hundreds of times over. So, moral to the story, kids. Don't punch shit all the time. It barely ever goes your way. Contrary to what the cartoons tell you. Number eight, Digimon Fusion. The main character's voice is like nails on a goddamn chalkboard. It does not get better. If anything, it gets worse. I could deal with his Digimon partner. His Digimon partner is kind of cool. The main character, the human, don't even know his name, really don't give a shit. I want to kill him. I want this guy to die because his voice is 
uh, steal a line from uh, Lord Slug Team Four Star Edition. It's like a drill in one ear and a drill in the other, and it meets in the middle. That's how bad this guy's voice is. I am not exaggerating. If you don't believe me, watch the English dub of this character, and holy shit, is he annoying. That in the show just was kind of somewhat hard to follow because it was kind of all over the place there for a while before it finally got its main storyline going, and by that point, I was kind of tuned out because of the main character. So, that's why that's on this list. Number seven, Digimon Tamers. For those that do not know what Digimon Tamers are, I guess you probably know this is Digimon Season 3. Uh, this is right after Digimon Adventure, both Seasons 1 and 2. This has no bearing on... Digimon Adventure story at all. The only connection to the Digimon Adventure story that it has is that actually it's kind of an interesting concept. They actually take, they make it like you, it's your world. Like the world that I'm in, the world that you're in, is the world that these characters are in. And Digimon was a TV show. And <clears throat> just like it is for us. And they have the card game, and they're playing the card game in the playground, and they're playing it at school, and it's all fun, and there's no harm to it. And then all of a sudden, that's when everything goes off the rails, and the card game turns into reality. And it's an interesting concept to watch. The first four or five episodes is kind of interesting. It's definitely... Got me intrigued. I'll be honest, this one had me intrigued for quite a while. And then we got to the digital world. And it still had me intrigued. Very good storyline. We had consequence to action. Digimon died. They didn't come back. They just stayed dead. There it was, there was no reanimation. Uh, let's go back to the Digi-Egg format. Like there was an adventure. When you died, motherfucker, you're dead. Like, that's it. Game over, just like it is in real life. And I like that. That was a very ballsy thing to do for a kid's anime. And I enjoyed that thoroughly. The reason that this is on my list at number seven is the final arc killed this show. Totally slaughtered it. Let's make the villain, the final villain, a big red fucking blob in the middle of the city that's going to ingest all of the digital data in the whole real world. And that's it. And the way, if I remember it, you kill it, is you got to get to the center and kill the colonel. And and when I say colonel, I mean like a popcorn colonel, not as like a colonel as in like military. Just a popcorn colonel with one of your secondary to turn into main character, one of your secondary characters turn main characters about halfway through the season being at the center of everything. And it ends up being her. It's a manifestation of her depression. If I remember correctly, um, it, it's, it tries to be deep with that, but it just falls flat. Unfortunately, that's why this is at number seven. Great show, great premise, great ideas. Very piss poor execution at the end. Should have been a better villain. <clears throat> so, with that being said, we will move on to number six. We're going to hit two guilty pleasures right here back to back for me. Legend of the Seeker was a BB BBC show. Holy shit, that's hard for me to say. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it came out at the same time as the movie I want to say it was The Seeker I think that's what the movie was called and everybody confused the show and the movie because I know I did I know there was a lot of other people that did too I don't remember what year this came out but I do know The Seeker and Legend of the Seeker came out in the same year I think it was 
months apart from each other. Uh, this show actually had promise. And unfortunately, the reason why it's on this list is because it only got two seasons and it ended on a cliffhanger. Um, and I don't remember what the cliffhanger was, but I do know it was a good one. Um, and it never got resolved. So it's based off of a book series, too, if I recall correctly. This is one I wouldn't mind seeing like somebody like Netflix or Amazon pick up and uh, run with. And make happen so hopefully somebody picks it up in the future and actually gives it, it a good go otherwise it stays here in the middle of the list of bad shows that i've seen because there's no resolution <clears throat> number five another guilty pleasure is the magicians this is basically adult harry potter um you want to say it's adult Harry Potter and it's adult um, uh, yeah shit Chronicles of Narnia blended together and it's decent but holy shit is it convoluted if you miss something you are totally fucking lost and that's the one thing I hate about this show because you miss even five minutes you're like what the fuck is going on <clears throat> and I don't like that <laughs> because especially with being a kid, yeah, being a kid, being a father of three kids and you get distracted quite often and you don't have any downtime to really watch anything, it makes it hard to pay attention to this show. It's a great binge, though. It's on Netflix. It's a great binge. So if you have not seen this, there's – Five seasons. I don't know the fifth season's on Netflix yet, but the fifth season is the final season. But it's a great binge. It really is. Uh, so that's why it's here in the middle of the list as a guilty pleasure. Number four, Heroes. If this show would have ended even after season two, the show would not be on this list. Uh, season two, I'll be I'll admit, was not great. Season one was absolutely batshit crazy, and it was very enjoyable. And it launched Zachary Quinto to the freaking stratosphere, and uh, paid in. Uh, I, I can never pronounce her last name, but she was the cheerleader. It shot her to the stratosphere, and. Uh, the guy that plays the dad in This Is Us, I don't know his name, but it shot him into that role. So it launched quite a few careers, there, and a lot of the people that are in this show are in other shows. This show definitely launched people into different directions, all for the better. But uh, like Hayden went to uh, Nashville uh, Zachary Guento became Spock on Star Trek. I mean, he's he's crushing it right now. Um, and some people would even argue and say that maybe Zachary Quinto's launch was uh, 24 in season one. But yeah, this this show lasted too long, ended on a terrible cliffhanger. Then it came back with a uh, soft reboot continuation whatever the hell you want to call it and uh, just got worse. So um, though, you know, the one person I've not seen in anything else since this, honestly, is the actor that played hero. Uh, and it's spelled H I R O. He was like the central figure point other than the cheerleader. Cause he could time travel and, uh, travel through space and time or however they described it. I don't remember. But he he was a very popular character as well. Number three, Chicago Law, which I mentioned in my previous video. Um, <clears throat> that uh, this show tried to capitalize on what we have now is the Chicago Trilogy which is PD, Med, and Fire. And this show is just terrible from the word go. 
even with the back door uh, pilot in, I believe it was PD. Uh, I believe it actually had multiple backdoor pilot episodes in PD and Med. They might have been in fire for an episode or two as well, but I'm pretty, I know for a fact they were in PD. And just show, didn't even make it a season. I think I made it 12 episodes and then that was it. So I'm kind of glad this show went when it did. Sorry about the cast and the crew that were part of it. Oh, excuse me. But I'm not sorry for the fact that the show came and went very quickly, blip on the radar, and it didn't hurt the Chicago trilogy at all. Number two. God, I don't want to talk about this one. SpongeBob. Oh, SpongeBob. Why do I feel like I get 10 years dumber whenever I see this show on TV? I just... Ooh, no. <laughs> I don't even let my kids watch this shit. Uh, if this is on TV, I immediately turn the channel. No questions asked. So, uh, yeah. That's the thing. And I don't have anything else to say about that. Because I hate the show with so much disdain that I'm not even going to give it the more time than I've already given it. I give it too much time as it is. So we will go to number one, which will be just as short and sweet because I have the same amount of disdain for this goddamn show as I do for SpongeBob. Honestly, either one of these could be one and two. But the ground floor is Dragon Ball GT. And the only reason why it's Dragon Ball GT is because I'm a Dragon Ball fan and GT is the absolute shit pinnacle of the Dragon Ball franchise other than Dragon Ball Evolution, which we won't talk about, which is just worse um very short series that god great ideas great arc ideas problem is is the arcs that had the great arc ideas were three or four episodes long it's not a fucking arc it's a mini series if you even want to call it that i mean four episodes 30 minutes a piece that's a two-hour movie so basically you put three movies together or well two movies back to back in GT before you went for the final arc with the dragons and don't even get me started about the baby arc because that was so fucked up the way they released all of that but um yeah GT is the ground floor today and it's not a good thing this is the ground floor to the pits of hell so uh with that i would like to say thanks for watching catch us next week next week's episode will be uh top 10 horror movies that i have seen uh so stay tuned for that uh, and we will catch you next time have a good day